I like playing games with friends. All sorts of games, ranging from shooters to board games to just about anything you can think of. But there's one type of game I never touch. Sports games. I just, I, I don't like them. And that brings me to today's topic. Golf. Yes, I'm serious. See, the thing about golf games is that they range from being realistic sports simulators to being the most silly creative games that I've ever played. And one thing that they do really, really well is the ability to play them with friends. With the current state of the world and everything, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't need more ability to spend time with friends. So, in order to accommodate for such a situation, I found three of the wackiest, weirdest golf games I could find, and I wanted to take some time today to share them with you. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. I really enjoy making these videos, and it helps me out a lot if you show me some support. With that out of the way, let's get going. The first game I want to introduce to you is 100 Foot Robot Golf. In it, you play golf as, you'll never guess, giant robots towering probably near or around 100 feet. Or in some cases, just giant monsters or skeletons. Honestly, this game is as chaotic as they come. You can ram into your friend's ball to prevent it from gaining grounds, you have the ability to use special moves, and the game is hilariously narrated by the McElroy brothers. I'm not even kidding, I feel like more often than not, the narration had me nearly crying of laughter. The lines range from regular funny to related to what's happening to just off the wall completely random. They're truly the best part of the game, but that doesn't mean it's the only good part. Each golfer you pick is a different type of giant robot, as I said, but they also have slightly different styles of golfing, as in how you power your shot. From holding the triggers to stopping spinning wheels, there's only a handful of options, but each one will take a second to master. You also have variants on how you hit the ball, as in what clubs you use and what type of shot you go for, as well as top and backspin. My favorite golfer is Project C, by the way, which is both Voltron and a bunch of corgis operating a giant mech. Can you really get much better than that? Course diversity abounds in 100-foot robot golf. You have islands, underwater cities, and as is to be expected as always, the moon. Each environment has destructible surroundings, so you could theoretically follow the design of the hole, or you could first destroy those pesky buildings in the way and go straight for the hole. And don't worry, since your shot trajectory is visible for all players to see, your friends will get in the way of your shots. It isn't an they might or might not, it will happen at least once, and you will hate them forever after it. At the beginning of each match is a classic 90s anime style introduction to each of the golfers you've selected, which is hilarious in its own right. And at the end of each hole, every golfer is awarded with a title that has absolutely zero bearings on what previously happened. Sadly, every player sees different awards and hears different commentary, but still, it's an absolute joy to play with your friends. But what if you don't have any friends available to play at the time? Luckily enough, the game does have a single player campaign, and it is weird to say the least. Before each round is once again an anime style scene to give context for what's going on. But the dubbing quality for what you're seeing is just, oh, I hope it's that uh, young fella, you know, uh, 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 God, uh, what is his name? Um, uh, no, 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 uh, you know, uh, pff, uh, pff, the guy, uh, pff, the guy, uh, the guy with the golf. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, it doesn't get much more 90s anime than horribly uncomfortable dubbing with what sounds like a voice actor in a tunnel. And honestly, the campaign is kind of hilarious. It's weird to see a fully stylized campaign here. They honestly didn't have to go this far with it, but it's really cool. I think it's worth checking out if you enjoy golf games or if you're just a huge Corgi fan. I mean, huge robot fan, that, that's the one. The, the corgis are there too, but the robots are more prominent. Overall, 100 Foot Robot Golf is a fantastic and frantic golf experience, well worth checking out. Moving right along, our next game is Golf With Your Friends, the 2016 golf game Darling that released on consoles earlier this year. In this game, you take the mantra of be the ball to the next level, with actually playing the ball itself rather than as any golfer. The courses here are more like mini golf courses rather than full-blown golf courses, which is 
fine by me, seeing as it's hard enough to gauge the power correctly. You have your pretty straightforward mini golf themes, you know the ones, Pirates, Woodland, the Worm franchise, you know, standard stuff. Not only that, but there's a bunch of different modes as well. You could do standard golf, sure, but you could also play basketball, which I know you were dying to do in this game called Golf With Your Friends. Clearly you saw the title and thought, hey, this is great, but I would really prefer if it was about basketball, in which case you've come to the right place. The gameplay quality here ranges from very fun to aggravatingly difficult. I swear, sometimes I have a shot lined up perfectly, and I just accidentally put a little too much power on the shot, and everything just gets thrown out the window. Not to mention, you have the option to turn on collision so you can once again go out of your way to ruin another player's day. Which is just the worst possible thing you could do to someone when they need a single stroke to win and you just ram into them, preventing them from making any progress and stopping them from having anything resembling a chance to win. It's just... Wow, is it aggravating. But honestly, if it wasn't frustrating and you couldn't mess with your friends, it wouldn't be anywhere near as fun as it is. And the frantic nature of everyone taking shots at the same time and potentially ramming into each other is really fun to work around. Honestly, I'm just more in shock than anything else. Golf with your friends is fun, but it's some of the most incredibly annoying course design first. I swear, each hole started with my friends and I saying, okay, where are we going? Rather than, you know, just going forward. I mean, don't get me wrong, one of us still went full force right out the gate, and it wasn't easy to get away with. Not to mention, some of these holes are long. And if you have the stroke limit set to 12 like we did, since that's what's standard, sometimes you're less likely to even make it to the end before being out of time. And don't even get me started on having to reposition yourself to make a shot for basketball. Perfectly good, par quality runs were ruined because of the precision required to make the basket. Yes, I'm still bitter. The last game on our list today is arguably our weirdest one yet, but not for the reason you'd think. See, this one is weird because it's a regular golf game. Everybody's Golf is the strangest golf game I think I've ever played. There isn't any fancy gimmicks or anything like that. You aren't 100 foot tall or playing as the ball. It's just, it, it's a golf game. And I know you're probably thinking, Andrew, this video is about weird golf games. And I mean, let me get there. We just started talking about it. Give it time. So the first thing you'll notice after you make your character is that you're in a hub world. It's not like groundbreakingly big or anything, but I'm just surprised it's here at all, honestly. Not only that, but you can emote? I don't really see what that has to do with golfing, but it's fine. As it turns out, there's more to it than just a hub space. You have the ability to go to any course you've unlocked and run around it with other players. I spent some time with my friend doing this. Yes, his character's name is OJ Simpson. Don't ask questions. We ended up playing an impromptu round of nine holes. With the ability to just pick up a game on a course you like, as well as getting the freedom to roam around, there's a lot of potential for fun. Not to mention, when you play the game either in free roam or by doing the standard 9-18 holes, your clubs will level up and grow, allowing you to pull off further drives and improve by playing. But that's not even all that there is. I haven't unlocked it yet because it requires playing a lot of golf, but there's fishing and even the ability to drive a golf cart, which just sounds absolutely fantastic getting into one of the open courses and setting up illicit golf cart races. Very excited to keep playing this one. What makes it so weird though is the one-two punch of being both a pseudo open world type game and also a very standard golf game. And what makes it even weirder is that I really like this game. I think that at the very least it's worth looking into. There's something hilarious about seeing everyone golfing at once and then sprinting like a madman to get to the ball. Also, the character creations let you just make some absolute abominations. I mean, I usually just go for the character to look like me, but let me tell you, some of the other options on there were just super weird. Outside of that though, I would say get everybody's golf if you see it on sale. There's enough game here that I feel like I'll be able to play it for a long time to come. In retrospect, I think I would label two of these three games as party games rather than actual representations of golf. That being said though, 
all three of these games are an excellent time with friends. The pure frantic and fun energy is perfect for when you feel stuck in a rut. And who doesn't love some friendly competition amongst friends? As long as you and your friends know where to draw the line between friendly competition and just being jerks to one another, that is. I think that these three games are excellent ways to get a little bit of social interaction with your friends from the safety of your own home. Thank you as always for watching. This was a super fun project for me, and I hope you'll stay tuned for more. And hey, I've got to say, you have just amazing eyes. Like, wow, I'm, I'm speechless. They're so easy to get lost in. As always, I have been Andrew, and I hope you have an awesome day.